What's up guys, I'm Eduardo from FuelTech here. Today to talk to you about automatic transmission control. Our ECUs from an FT600 down even to an FT450 are able to control almost any kind of automatic transmissions. Uh, there are much simpler uh, transmission, automatic transmissions like a 4L60, 4L80, the information on how to wire them and how to control them is actually on our website. You can access to them. Uh, on my case, I have back here my personal project. It's a Lexus 92 SC400, uh, one UZ engine B8 that originally was with an A340 transmission that at some point wasn't running anymore. You know, it's more than 30 years old and I decided to go with something newer. For, for that reason, I decided to go with an 8HP transmission. So an eight speed trans automatic transmission uh, in, from a BMW in my case. The good thing about this 8HP, for example, is that you have almost on a lot of vehicles today, uh, Jeep, Dodge, uh, BMWs, and even many other brands are using a lot of this transmission. They are cheap to find and they can hold a lot of power and they shift very, very good. The eight speed, they have an electronic park. What that means, it has an internal solenoid to control the park position. That means that if for any reason you unplug the transmission, like for example, in a race car, you shut off the main kill switch, it will, this transmission will go directly to park. It's something that you don't want to have. So for that reason, you will need to delete the part on this. There are some cables that actually are to set to put on this little lever and move it down, hold it there. So to delete the part, and if you want to put it on part, you move a little lever to put it back on part. That will be one option. The second option will be once you open the transmission to take the internal TCU out, delete the, the shift mechanism that is actually to put it on part. That will be my recommendation. And with that, you delete the part forever and you will be safe. My demonstration car here, it's my personal Lexus SC400, as I mentioned before. It got a, the original stock engine with a turbo in order to do a little more fun during the weekends on, the, uh, on road racing. It got big brakes, it got suspension, everything to uh, to be worthy on a race circuit and it's pretty much a very very fun car and for sure the eight speed transmission help it a lot now let me show you how it shift it's here on the dyno in order to you can understand how it shift because it's very interesting how it does in this case replacing my select my shift selector i have just a fuel tech switch panel mini 5 where I have actually my anti-lag, reverse, neutral, drive, or manual. So I can go just to drive and the ECU will do the, all the automatic shifting or shift it to manual. On the manual shifting, you see that it's at, it is on manual. I could go a little higher on RPM and do the shifting. And now, since it's on low TPS, it will be uh, softer shifting and if I floor it, it will be harder. All those settings, you can play with that. Or instead of being manual, click on drive and now we will do all the automatic shifting automatically. As all the cool, cool features on the fuel tech, you can set alerts, for example, here, everything that is not right for a road race it's very important for to give a feedback for the driver to understand when something is going on uh, going from drive to manual on the transmission it's essentially enable or not the paddle shifting you can do any kind of paddle shifting in this case i have like a wrc style that you can upshift and downshift on the same one so that way you can be playing with the steering wheel fighting to get the car on the track and keep doing the shifting very easily all those settings all the safety for upshift and downshift are set on the software or again all the automatic shifting on the drive settings the cool thing is also i got a, a fuel tech nano pro where i can click on the touchscreen here 
and change the screens on the ECU in order to have even more information for the driver. A road race, it's very important to have all the temperatures and everything uh, controlled. Almost all these transmissions are able to be controlled directly to the, the output on the ECU. Depending if you need a trigger by power or ground, you may need to switch between a blue or a yellow output. And depending on how many of them. Because yes, you can run on an FT450, for example, you can run maybe a four cylinder engine with a 4L60 and you will have still enough outputs to do it. But at some point, depending if you have a V8, uh, with an 8-speed transmission, for example, you will need to maybe go up to an FT600 in order to be able to have all the outputs available necessarily to control everything. As I mentioned before, for a 4L60, 4L80 transmission, we have a pretty good manual that describes all the settings that you should do in order to control them. Essentially, those transmission has two shifting solenoids that when you enable one solenoid, you will have first gear. When you enable both of them will be second. Uh, you disable this one and only the other one will be third. And when you turn off both solenoids, go to fourth gear, for example. I think it's a little backwards, but almost any transmission will be slightly different to another one. The Toyota A340 transmissions are exactly the same, like that kind of logic. Uh, then you have uh, pressure control solenoids in order to increase or decrease the pressure during shifting that, they had, that helps a lot in order to make shifting smoother or not. Those four speed transmissions are pretty much similar one to, in, one to each other. So the manual available on our website, just look for on our website for 4L60, 4L80 control and you will be able to find that. Uh, it's pretty much simple. Now, when we go up to an eight-speed transmission, it became more complicated, essentially to the way on how to do the shifting. Field ECUs has the capability to do up to 10-speed transmissions. Yes, this FT600 is able to control a 10L or 10R transmission that is essentially a clutch-to-clutch -clutch transmission. You have solenoids going in versus out, on each shifting and that way you can choose when to shift at which point and everything for your specific racing. As for the 8-speed transmission, you will need seven outputs from the ECU to do all the shifting solenoids, five of them. Then you have one more solenoid for transmission pressure control and another more solenoid for lockup control on the torque converter. And on the 10 speed, you will need eight outputs from the ECU, one more because you have six shifting solenoids plus transmission control, uh, transmission pressure control and lockup. So all those solenoids you control directly to the ECU, but in between the ECU and the transmission, you will need to use a pick and hold pro. It's an injector driver that we actually use to control the current on each solenoid and be able to control them the right way. And on the ECU later on, you will do the ramps, how to ramp in versus out, all single solenoids. When we talk about 10 speed transmissions, they are kind of easier to do them because you don't need to open the transmission, but they don't have any electronics inside. It's basically just the solenoids and you need to wire them from the ECU to the pick and hold and to, from the pick and hold to the transmission and then all the signals goes directly to the ECU back. And on the 8HP, it's exactly the same thing with the only difference that you will need to ship to us your internal TCU 
in order to we open, remove the original TCU that is inside and install the PCB board that will do the jump between the external connector on the transmission, that is the one that you see outside, in order to control all the solenoids and have all the sensors directly wired to the connector. Now, this will mean that you will need to open the transmission, remove the valve body, remove the TCU itself that I believe from the 45 up to the 90, they are all the same, they look all the same, and we will install it and ship it back to you. That for that, you will need to do an RMA or order sheet and ship it to us, and we will ship it as fast as we can back to you. With all that, you will be able to control this 8HP transmission directly on your FuelTech ECU, the same one that you have. All our ECUs has all the same features, so you don't need any special update. Going from the version uh, 5.31 and on, you will be able to control the 8 and 10 speed transmissions. Our ECUs are able, as I mentioned, to control 4, 6, 8, 10 speeds. It pretty much you have all the tools necessarily to do it. Tuning a transmission is not easy. You should understand all the terms and understand what is the pressure is, how the solenoid works, uh, how the clutch are applied. So understand the logic on the transmission because on the ECU, you need to tell it what to do. It won't do it by itself. We control the transmission in an open loop way. So we tell it the transmission what to do. If it like it or not, it depends on you as a tuner in order to do it. It's not like a tuning an engine. If you tell the engine to do something that the engine doesn't like it, it will break. So be careful, learn all the terms and learn everything that you need to know about transmissions before doing the tuning, especially on an eight speed or a 10 speed. They are the most complicated transmissions available over there. If you want to know a little more in depth on everything that I'm talking here, the next video will explain you detail by detail on our software what tools you have available to use these transmissions on your specific application.